another habitat that I've had the, the pleasure of being involved with mycologically is what we call wax cap grasslands. These are short sward, unimproved grasslands where the grass is kept short either by grazing or mowing. And this, this little habitat niche produces a, a wonderful diversity of our brightly coloured wax cap species. So hygrocybes, wax caps, hygrocybes, whatever you, however you wish to pronounce it, um, produce fruit bodies of all sorts of colours, reds and oranges, yellows, pinks, as well as um, paler browns and uh, beige and whites. Um, they're an absolute spectacle, a good area of wax cap grassland in the autumn in a good fruiting year. It's just beautiful, just uh, as lovely as the wildflowers that come earlier in the year. Also, um, you might expect to find fairy clubs in this habitat, which are little, uh, almost coral-like structures that uh, appear from the soil in, in amongst the grass, um, and, uh, and a few other species that seem to specialise in what this niche has to offer. So the presence of these fungi in this little habitat is really important. It indicates that the uh, soil profile hasn't been changed either physically by ploughing or chemically by uh, the addition of a lot of fertiliser. And that means that this habitat niche is extremely biodiverse, not just for its fungi, but also for its invertebrate and plant um, inhabitants. Often this habitat is quite thin soiled and rocky, um, which makes it particularly difficult, obviously, for the farmers to um, use a plough or apply fertiliser. And I'm sitting on a lovely bank of basalt covered in thyme, and clover and self-heal and narrow leaved grasses um, and this produces a little bit early um, in early July yet, but this will produce a, a, a crop of wax cap and other species a little bit later in the year. The bright green, uh, broad leaved grassy fields that have been improved uh, are very unlikely to produce any of these species at all. Fungi are particularly good indicators of this habitat because they are primarily a subterranean species. So however hard the field or the ground has been grazed or mown, it doesn't actually destroy the organism, whereas flowering plants tend to be held back and don't flower and are much more difficult to, um, to recognise. So I have been to fields which have been classified, classified as botanically poor, and yet their fungal um, population would suggest that actually um, the soil itself has been undisturbed for, for decades and possibly a lot longer. And again, it's easy to miss these little habitats if you don't take into account some of the indicator species. So I've had a huge amount of fun. Um, uh, my small contribution to the field work, which has helped us to understand um, the particular uh, habitat. And as I said before, uh, there's a lot of work now going on, on on the investigation below ground using DNA. And this will make it easier um, to find out exactly how diverse the best of these sites actually are.